Uh, I, I come from Coonabarabran, which is about six hours to the north of here, and I was talking to my... I have uh, grown children, adult children now, uh, in their about 25 up to 32. And I was saying to them I was going to speak to a whole lot of young people about teaching, and they said, well, Dad, you're going to lose them straight away because they're not going to be interested in um, what you've got to say. You know, you're not, you need to be connected and all these things. So I, sort of, I thought I would try to give you a bit of a... Uh, I wanted to let you know about... Describe the town, describe my school, but in, and at the same time give you a general sense of what it might be like in a rural community. But then also uh, have a talk to you about what you could expect if you were there and then what we would expect of you and then maybe a little bit about careers and then we'll see where we go. I'm not, there's probably a lot of uh, misconceptions and myths that are around country schools and, and country schooling. Could I just get a little bit of an idea? I, I'm sort of getting a, a feel for uh, a bit of the look of you. How many people have been out west of the Blue, Blue Mountains? Is sort of, yeah, okay, a lot of people. Good, thank you. I, I just, we often, when we're talking to people in Sydney, we'll often um, be talking about some part of connection to the school and people think that it's a, about an hour out of Penrith and they just don't realise how far it is. But if you've been over the mountains, then at least you know the land goes for quite a long way after it. So we'll, we'll, uh, we'll get somewhere. The, the first thing I would say, uh, there are some large centres out in the west. You, you'll get uh, places like Dubbo and Bathurst and uh, Armidale where you could easily mistake yourself for being in the suburbs of Sydney somewhere. You could think you're out in the western suburbs. That everything's gutted, everything's ordered, the houses are all close together, things look fresh and new and there's obviously a lot of activity, a lot of employment. But then you do get a lot of little country towns that do look more like they've been sitting still for you know, 40 years or something like that. They, they've got a look where... Uh, there may be old concrete, there may be uh, cobwebs, there may be paint flaking, there may, it doesn't look all rendered and, and I guess suburban. So I'm in one of those towns, I'm in a little town called Coonabarabra and, and if anyone was watching the ABC the other week uh, and saw Julia Samiro and Brian Cox, did any of you catch that at all? Uh, it was a big astronomy thing, there's a, there's a huge big telescope, one of the largest ones in the world, uh, sitting on the Warrumbungle Mountains which is just down the road from where I, I live. And um, they, were, they were looking at that and they were uh, talking about just uh, how important that, that uh, observation, the observatory and the, um, the science that goes on there is still very important for Australia and it's also important for the local town. It's, it's a benefit for us in that we get some spin-off to it. We, have, uh, we had a big group of uh, kids come down here for robotics just recently. Uh, it's called... Um, I think it's called First Robotics or something like that. It's an international competition. So our kids got to play with the people working up in the astronomy section. So there's a whole lot of workshops where they make really fine, uh, mechanised uh, little robotic things. And so the kids got the chance to uh, use the expertise from those people, which really helped. Anyway, I'm getting off the track. So I'm, the, I'm a fortunate one. I'm in a little country town that has got peeling paint. It has got empty shops in some places. But there, it has got also... Um, Quite a few things that you probably wouldn't expect. But I'll just talk a little bit more about describing the town first. Though the economy, it's it's managing. It's not in decline. There are some little country towns that you'll go to that where things are getting smaller, where businesses have closed, or where they, they are, are struggling. Uh, not all country towns are like that, but some are. There are some where mining is, is still um, managing to, to to turn the economy over. I'm thinking of places like Narrabri, where there's still quite a workforce, uh, even though some of them are fly in, fly out there's still uh, an economy that is fairly vibrant there. Uh, the other big things about the, the little townships are the, the culture that's there. They tend to be um, uh, fairly conservative. They tend to be white and Anglo. That's, that's generally how they are. You'll often get popul you know, small populations of people that uh, live there as well. Particularly, you get into larger centres and you get uh, large families. People, I think some people have wised up to the fact that the biggest centres in the country are great places to live, so they take their family out there, particularly if they're um, either recent migrants or their families that have uh, had enough of living out in the west of Sydney. But the big thing for most country towns is there is a significant uh, population of Indigenous children there attending the school and involved in the place. I'm really lucky at Coonabarabra, and it, it has a, a, a connection to its Indigenous people that goes right back to the start. We, they, the, the indigenous people that lived there did not get uh, pushed off to a mission anywhere, or some of, like some of them certainly did. There were stolen generations issues for them. But um, there was actually, I'll, I'll take a little bit more, this will be another two minutes, yeah. There's a lady uh, who wrote a letter to the Queen back in about 1885, I think it was, 
and asked for a grant of land. She was an Aboriginal woman, so it's quite uh, unheard of that Aboriginal people would actually be owning some of their own land back before 1900. But she did. The Queen granted her wish and she had a small parcel of land and on that land she kept her family and uh, you know, the extended family and it was quite a community there. Unfortunately, I think it was around about 1910 or so, the, the government in their wisdom took the land back off her and said, OK, we'll make that into a mission and, so, and push everyone there. But nonetheless, the local Aboriginal community have, have maintained a connection. And one of the things we're, our school is doing on the day before Anzac Day, that, that, like I'm on, I don't know whether you all know I'm on holidays at the moment, unlike you, but um, it's, and it's a nice feeling. But we, go, we return to school just the day before Anzac Day and we'll go out to Burrabadi, which is the name of this little place, and we'll have a, a tour of the place by people that actually live there and grew up there. So it's a, it, the, having that sort of connection back to country uh, for our staff as well as for the kids is a really, it's a huge um, benefit for the school. It's very hard for uh, Aboriginal communities uh, that have been seriously disconnected, as in a lot of the uh, Sydney communities, to um, get that same sort of uh, you know, respect for the place they live. And they're connected and they're committed to it. We still have our issues with, with Aboriginal education. We're, obviously, um, there are a lot of challenges around poverty and, and around um, disengagement, but uh, we, we've certainly got, that's a great foundation for us to build upon. And I was just going to talk quickly, the, the, the word Coonabarabran, it actually, it, I'm told that it means inquisitive person. And um, we would, there's a whole lot of talk about whether it actually means what's that smell or not. And, and, but I, and it could mean that, but it probably would be the person who was inquisitive who was asking what was that smell of the person, you know, the early colonial or whoever it was that was asking what the name of the place is. The, the, the towns and all country towns are really inquisitive. If you're a young person coming out to, or an old person coming out to uh, work in a country town, they will want to know everything about you. They will want to have your history. And I have a, a good friend, and, and she's just moving from Coonabarabran to uh, Mudgee to take up a different teaching position. She said it was kind of spooky for her as a city person coming to the country, and she was just sort of a little bit on edge about her own personal security just because of the level of questions that uh, the local people were asking you. Now, they wanted to know exactly where you live, what your, your marital status is, or the, whole, the whole thing, well before you get onto Facebook or anything else. Like, they just, they want to have all that information. But it's, it's a, there's a connectedness that um, runs through country towns that is quite amazing. They will want to know about you, but they, they will do anything for you. And it only takes, people often say, oh, I've been here 20 years, I'm still not considered to be uh, a local. But it's not true. What, you've only got to be in a town for a short period of time and people do adopt you and they do uh, look after you. And if there's anything that you want from a country, like country towns are incredibly uh, magnanimous and, and uh, generous. The other thing I just quickly mentioned too is the values. I mentioned that uh, they tend to be Anglo and conservative. That's true, although there's always uh, um, strong veins of, of uh, other, so, uh, like, um, how much I mentioned? Environmental politics is really, really big. Up around Narrabri, Coonabarabra, and anywhere where there's been coal seam gas as an issue, there are often people that you would think look, may hold really conservative views in terms of marriage and um, drug trials and the flag, but they'll be chaining themselves to gates because they don't want uh, mining companies to come in on their land. So th there's people are um, certainly able to make their own judgments, and it's. It, I would hate for people to think I'm not going out what country New South Wales because they're rednecks because it's nothing's further from the truth. You will get people that are um, fairly fairly strong about their views and their opinions, but at the same time, they have them because, they, like everybody, they they have thought about it. So I I have uh, I sometimes hold my tongue when I'm at um, the the mayor's function or at the uh, local chamber of commerce. But there's certainly plenty of opportunities for people to take uh, ideas and new and, and uh, innovative ideas out to the country, and they are welcomed. School, I'll just go a little bit more quickly. The Coonabarabran High School, I'm not sure how many of you would actually have ever heard of the place, but it's actually quite a high-achieving school. We, we've had a couple of years where we've been uh, in the, the achievers list and recognised by the uh, Sydney Morning Herald. Uh, they rank schools. And I'm not for ranking, I don't think it's uh, a helpful exercise, but at the same time it's nice to know that the school's doing uh, well. 
particularly given the, the children that we service. And that would be the, the next thing I'd say is the school is, is uh, recognised as being a low socio-economic school, which means we get uh, additional funding based upon the fact that we're remote. Our location is a long way from anywhere. The nearest big centre would be 150 k's away to Dubbo. Uh, and we also get it because we have a large population of Aboriginal children, about 20% of the, the school are Aboriginal. And uh, we also get it because of the, the, uh, the poverty that, uh, or, or the, the level of income of the people that live in the town and around the town. They, the statistic, statisticians work out uh, how well off the towns are. And one thing that you will notice as a, a young person moving from Sydney into the country towns is a lot of people live on a lot less. Unfortunately, you can in the country. You don't actually need the same sort of level of disposable income, but you need to understand that when you go there, you'll be one of the, the wealthier people in town. You'll be on your first year salary or whatever, still one of the wealthier people in the town. The farmers will have boom and bust years, of course, but uh, the general population will be, will be earning significantly less than what a teacher would be doing. So in some ways, you, you not only get the, uh, you get inspected, but they, and they, but they also give you a certain deference because you, you are a professional in their town. So there's, a, a, um, there's an expectation of you that you will be uh, willing to be involved in the things that happen. A lot of people, when they come out, they love it because they're swept up in the recreational activities. If there's a basketball comp and a tennis comp and a soccer comp, you will be in all three. Uh, if you if you show some sort of thing for it, if you are, are musical, the musical people will grab you. If you are um, dr interested in drama, the local drama production will have you going. They don't let you just sit and um, hide your, your talents under a bushel. You have to get in there. And they will know because they'll, they'll be able to tell. Um, <laughs> so, uh, I, I guess the other thing I would say just about my school in terms of an ethic for the place, and it, I think it's the same for a lot of... Uh, country schools, is we give the teachers uh, a fair bit of autonomy. I, I like teachers to take on what they want to do, and I like them to take a risk. I'm, I'm not so sure that that's the same in a lot of city schools. Unfortunately, in a large city school, there'll be eight to ten in your faculty, and there'll be someone who already does that job. Whatever that job is that you think you might like to do, someone will already be doing it. And getting a chance to, getting a a gig in the HSC modern history or something like that can sometimes mean sitting and waiting for a long time. Whereas if you show an interest and a passion and you are in a country school, uh, there's a very good opportunity that you'll get a, a bite of it very, you know, fairly soon in your career. So that's the description of the town and the school. The next two things I, I was hoping to speak about was what you can expect from when you go to a country town and then what we would expect of you. Uh, we've been doing a, a, there's a program we are using in our the school where I am the principal, called 2LS. I don't know whether anyone's heard of it. It's a secondary learning strategy. And a lot of it was around about making sure that you knew what people are letting your students know what they're expecting to learn in a lesson, the, the, the learning goals of the lesson. And so there's been a lot of uh, work done on that. And I'm very conscious of the fact that I don't do a very good job of it. I take people on a bit of a, a mystery ride. So you know what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get you to think about what you can expect from the country and then what we might expect of you. I. I I was born up in the country, so I'm, I'm used to it, but I came here to uh, New South Wales Uni many, many years ago, probably 30, 35 years ago, uh, and I loved it. It was a, a fantastic experience for me. And I did a lot of growing up at uni. I was saying to my mum, who came with me today, um, that it was a time when I, I, when I first left school, I went and did an um, electronics traineeship, and so I was in a, uh, with a, a lot of young guys, and we were going, working and training at the same time, and it was just a party. And I assume there may be some people in here that are still in that phase of their, uh, their life, that uh, late adolescence, where life is uh, a big party. And I guess what I'd say to you is enjoy that, but you're probably not ready for a country town yet, or we might not be ready for you. <laughs> but um, so if, you, if they, are they allowed to leave when they, if they wish to, they can, yeah. Um, so just the, like a country experience is not for everybody, but I'd really like you to give it some thought uh, because there is certainly... Uh, there's a lot of growth you can do because you can be at uni and learning about things. You can be doing lots, handing in the assignments and getting the grades and learning, but that doesn't actually mean you're growing. You might not, you know, you don't change. Uh, there's that cognitive thing, but then there's the whole um, uh, the other stuff that's really important, and that's the growth that you can get if you are, are brave enough to take on an experience out in the country where you are uh, probably a lot less supported. 
Um, so I'll talk a little bit about what you can expect. When you get out there, you will see big open skies. It's amazing. Uh, I just on the trip in, driving, I was driving through and in the tunnel and out of the tunnel. Then I was the you know, coming up South Dowling Road, and there's all the the, the buildings that um, used to be breweries when I was a young fella, but now there's just very high uh, skyscrapers and, and uh, residential complexes, I suppose you call them. You get to the country, and there, my little town, which is probably bigger than a lot. Probably the, the tallest house is a two-storey house. There's, there's nothing, like the tallest shop is the local mayoral chambers, two storeys. So you see so much more sky and every, the streets are wider because they, they haven't pinched the footpath for something else. We haven't got a metro running through the middle so there's, the roads are wide. Yeah? Um, there aren't very many snakes and spiders, so if that's, I don't know whether that's worrying any, any people, <laughs> but there really aren't. Um, the, yeah, I, I'm only going to make things worse. That was, so, <laughs> if you'd like to come and have a look, you're most welcome. There aren't very many. Uh, the other thing I'd say is the, the children are, tend to be compliant. I'm not, I, I wouldn't want to be telling you any lies, but most kids still have a respect for authority. Like we said about the, some of the houses still look the same as they did 40 years ago. Some of the kids are the same as they were 40 years ago in that they still have some respect for authority figures. Uh, and, and that's good and bad. It's, that means some of the, one thing we have to work on is getting the children to be a bit better risk takers. We, our, th our school motto is forever dare. And we're often saying to the children, you've really got to have a go at it. You've got to, you've got to uh, take that chance. The, but a lot of them uh, will defer, uh, which is when you're a beginning teacher and you're just trying to get on with that lesson, it's a really nice thing to have sometimes, I know. Uh, I'd say there's still some, we still have, uh, um, the regular incidents of challenging the challenge behaviours of children. The school where I am has a support faculty. We have children that have got uh, emotional disorders and behaviour disorders. There are still, uh, you know, it's not utopia. There are still kids that are, are that you need to do that extra work for to support. But um, certainly, the, overall, the kids will stop, listen to you when you give them the direction, and then they will most times do exactly as you say. Which I'm not sure how much of a teaching experience you've had. But there are some kids that just haven't got that, uh, that level of self-regulation yet. So I know that's the case. The other thing I'd say is the, the, the colleagues will tend to be very, very supportive. We, we, we are self-contained by our isolation. So while I have a staff of 40 in my school, they look after one another really well. So they, there's... Uh, there is the looking after in terms of the sharing of resources, the sharing of ideas for children. So there's a lot of uh, collegial communication, but there's also the emotional looking after and the making sure that if someone had something going on that there'd be a, uh, a, you know, a meal cooked for somebody or a chance to go around and watch the footy or watch the telly or have a, you know, there people look after one another in terms of their, their, uh, the needs that they have because they haven't got their family just down the block, I suppose is the way to put it. So there's a, lot, a fair bit of do-it-yourself and fix-it-yourself uh, mentality. And that tends to be a bit challenging for uh, some people. And it's something you learn as a new teacher. There's an old expression that uh, predates me well and truly. It's called killing your own snakes. I don't think anyone's ever heard that expression. But it means if you're in a classroom and you've got some child that's driving you nuts and misbehaving, rather than just booting them off to the deputy or wherever, you actually look after it yourself. It's a, I, don't know what the, I don't think the kids know what that expression means, but the teachers certainly do. So when you come out as a, a, new, uh, a new teacher, there, there's certainly support for you, but at the same time there's an expectation that you will learn how to do this yourself. We're not going, if, if you come out to Coonabarabran, I had uh, three students out last year for an internship. If you come out to Coonabarabran and do a, a term with us, we will expect you to leave our school with the, the skill set that you need to be a very successful teacher. We're, we're not, we're, you don't just come out to do a prac and then go back the same person. That's not, going, that's not part of the ethic of it. So that's what you can expect, what we would expect from you. The, I, the first thing is that the students come first. We are, we're, unfortunately, while you're on your prac, you're not getting paid. But the, the reality is if you're a teacher, you're getting paid a large amount of money and the kids come first. You may feel uh, like your second best, and that's because you're being paid to do the job. They are not. They are just turning up and they're expecting your best from you. So in the, that's the, 
the first thing we would want from you if you came to our school is you would recognise that while everything is still about you, it's not. It's about the kids and then we'll look after you second. Uh, I, I, we'd want you to have an openness to ideas, to try things. We would not want to hear that you saw something happen two years ago somewhere else and it didn't work. We want, want you to, to be uh, ready to, to really give it a try. We'd want you to be willing to experience new things. You may not be um, interested in playing trumpet, but it may be something that you pick up in the first few weeks of your time there. Like if someone, if we need a trumpet player and you've got, the, you've got some lips, then you'll probably be given the trumpet. <laughs> You, it's, it's, um, we, we'd like people to try things. Uh, and we'd want you to be engaged and participating. We're not interested in having someone who uh, either... Um, a reality is that, that it's difficult. It's, it's a bit scary to go into a new environment. But the way that you have to manage that if you go to a country town is you have to jump in. There's no point in sort of trying to stay back from it and having an observation as... as uh, like an anthropological sort of a thing where you're just viewing the whole thing and letting it go by. You've got to actually get involved in it if you're interested. And the last thing I'd say, just that, that professionalism, there's, you, you have to turn up professional, you have to be ready to, to work in the morning, you have to be um, sober, clear-eyed, uh, <laughs> emotions in check, you know, not sort of... You, you have to turn up professional and ready to work. You can still have all the other stuff going on, but that's got to be there. And the preparedness, it's just the amount of the time that you do when you're a beginning teacher, you will probably know if you've already done a prac or two that you can get pretty exhausted by the end of the week if you've been in front of kids for a week. That, that's true. You have to prepare. You have to do the hours to get yourself into a place where you will be. So, careers. We do, we, I had three uh, interns last year. Two of them ended up with work within about, I think it might have been two or three months of their time there. They came back to Sydney got their affairs in order, and then they were back out uh, and working in country schools. There's plenty of work around, particularly if you're interested in a, a temporary contract, that a lot of schools uh, need to know that they're in a country area, they need to know that they're going to have the staffing um, into the future before they will actually permanently recruit someone or encourage that to happen. They are generally are very keen on new graduates. I, this year I've had um, of... Seven new, seven new staff this year and two of them are brand new graduates. Two of them were people who were on temporary contracts out in the bush for six months and decided they'd like it and stay and then the other three are just appointments. So it's sort of, there's a good mix of people coming from different places. There are permanent appointments to the school, uh, particularly uh, if you are in an area where there might be a shortage of uh, teaching staff in the country, math, science, then if you are interested in going there, you, you'll probably be able to find yourself a permanent appointment pretty quickly. The other thing that I would say about careers in, in uh, country New South Wales is just the, the cost of living. It, I know there's a fair bit of pressure on people. I have uh, four children, three of whom live in Sydney, one in Waverley, and the, the cost of it is uh, it's pretty extraordinary. And that's not just the, the accommodation, but it's, it's the whole lifestyle, the transport and everything. If you are interested in a, a point in your life where you'd like to start to consolidate a little bit, an uh, appointment in a country town is a really good idea. You, your rent is up mostly subsidised. Your transport is when you need it. You go down for a, a big holiday down to uh, the Sydney or the coast or something like that, and then a lot of your costs are a lot, are quite a bit lower. Job security is very good if you want that. If you uh, you can get yourself a temporary contract where you can say, "I'll try this out for six months to a year," but uh, I don't know how I'll go. But if you are in a permanent position, they are fairly secure. Uh, and I, I've put down here relationships. I, it's very hard. We, a lot of our young ones, um, uh, they get on... The social media tends to be that thing that sort of keeps them connected to the life they had while they were at uni or before they came to uh, work in a country town. And it's wonderful, but there are, you'd be amazed how many uh, relationships bloom as uh, young people come out to country towns. There's usually uh, a whole lot of people who are very keen to uh, meet other people, so I, I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> um, and the last thing I'd just say is the opportunities for professional growth uh, are quite amazing in that you, I mentioned earlier that if you're in a large school, most of those, those uh, faculty-type jobs have, uh, are taken or spoken for, but also the whole school jobs. When you're uh, a beginning teacher, you, your focus, quite rightly, is on that classroom, but there's all these bigger things that happen in a school, like there's timetabling, welfare, uh, curriculum planning, all those sorts of things that are often 
if you're in a, a, a larger centre, you don't even have to think about it. You just take what they give you. Whereas in a country uh, school, you actually be asked what you think and you, if you are interested, have that, that bent, would like to be involved with the professional learning of the rest of the school, um, there's, there's always a, uh, you'd be eagerly taken up and snapped up, I'm sure. I'm going to leave it there and see if there's any questions. Uh, if anyone has any questions for me at all, I'd be happy to answer. Yes, sir. Just a statement, I'll comment. I just want to thank you for coming out and cheering. Yeah. All that oh, thank you. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. <laughs> thank you. So again, I'd just like to thank Mel for coming all this way. Um, just on the relationships, so one of the three interns that went out to Coonabarabra, she's back in Sydney, but she met a fella. <laughs> and she's moving back. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. so um, there's always hope for those relationships. <laughs> okay.